What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by. Today's project is this Husqvarna lawn mower and there are two problems with it. The biggest problem is that the mower shakes violently when running and the second problem is that the handlebars won't stay up, making the mower extremely difficult to maneuver. Let's take a good look at it, find out what's wrong with it and hopefully we can fix it. In this video we try and repair this mower, however it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. This mower belongs to a friend of the family and what happened was that while they were mowing they hit one of the bolts that secured a basketball post to a concrete slab. It damaged the blade and bent the crankshaft which of course now means the engine won't stop shaking while being used. The options were to either replace the mower or to keep using it till it let go. Well if you couldn't guess the choice was to keep using it. The only problem was that there was a lack of basic maintenance which caused the engine to fail even quicker than it should have. There's also one other strange problem that showed up because the mower wouldn't stop shaking it damaged the lower handlebar which attaches to the deck. Just to give you an idea on how badly this engine is damaged I'm going to start it and show you what it's doing. Now this is some of the worst shaking I've ever seen from an engine. The camera is blurring the footage, but in reality, the airbox would vibrate so much that it would throw off the cover. That's the reason why there are rubber bands on it. They're there to keep the cover from flying off, which is actually quite ingenious. Aside from the cover, the vibration also damaged the lower part of the handlebar, but after it was replaced, the bar is always loose and won't stay up anymore. This makes using the mower extremely frustrating to use because it's hard to pick up the front wheels so you can change directions. In fact, most of the time I would just leave the handle down because that's where we would typically end up in a few minutes. After further questions for the owner and some research, I figured out what happened. The lower handle is now obsolete, so they had to order a different handle that was meant for a different deck. One of the biggest giveaways is that it's not even the same color as the upper portion of the handle. If we take a look down towards the part of the handle where it attaches to the deck, you can see there's a stud that the bar goes through and is held in place with a wing nut. Now the replacement handle stops at the stud, but the original handle is designed to extend past the stud and interlock with one of these two openings, that way you can adjust the handle bar to your height. The first thing we need to do is to figure out if we relocate the bar to go through the next hole, if we can then bolt the lower section in place to one of the two adjustable positions, otherwise we might have to make a new hole in the bar. I really only want to deal with the lower portion of the handlebar so I'm going to separate the upper part from it and then take off the lower portion from the deck. The original design of the lower bar actually consists of two pieces instead of this single piece. Now the thought did cross my mind to cut this bar apart to make it more like the original one but I feel the one piece design is more rigid when compared to the two pieces so I decided against cutting it. The other possible option to modifying this handle would be to find another mower with a bad drive system or a deck and then use it for parts. But these mowers are not very common because when these were new, they were $400 plus tax. That makes them on the higher end of residential walk behind mowers. So finding another one would be quite difficult. Once the handle is free from the deck, I'll then try to reinstall it. But this time I'm gonna move it up to the next hole in the bar and see if the lower portion will clear the bracket. That way we can still use the adjusting holes. And it looks as though the handle is too long and it won't clear the bracket. Now I could cut the handle so we could clear it, but instead I'm gonna make a new hole in the bar. That way the lower portion of the handle will clear the bracket and we can still use the existing holes for the new pins. The first thing I did was measure the distance from the middle of one of the adjusting holes to the middle of that stud. I then used that measurement to make a new hole in the bar. Now we did try to flatten the round bar, but it was a lot harder than I thought it was. I did manage to make it more of an oval than a circle where the new hole will be. I then drilled a pilot hole and then followed that with a step drill. Thank you. 
After the new hole has been drilled, I then try to reinstall it and see if the hole at the bottom of the bar lines up with the adjusting holes on the bracket. I just need it to be close and not exact. If needed, I might open the new hole just another size to get it to fit, but it looks like it's lined up so I'll leave it alone. Now the next step is to make new locating pins on the ends of the handle, but instead of welding a stud in the opening, I'm going to use nuts and bolts instead because this will be a lot easier. And if it doesn't work, it'll be easy to take off so we can try a different method. I also did not use thread locker on these because this particular nut has a nylon insert which should keep it from backing off. If it does back off, the insert should also keep it from completely falling off the bolt. And if it still backs off, I will use a lock washer instead. The reason I didn't use a lock washer in the first place is a clearance issue. I felt like I needed all the thread I could get, but after doing a test fit, I think there's plenty of room for it. Now that I know it's going to work, I'm going to finally install the lower handlebar to the deck. Once I tighten the wing nuts, you can see how the bolts will slide into the adjusting holes. Now I could make this fix more permanent, but I don't want to put more time into it only to get the same results. Besides, this is also a simple solution to the problem as opposed to welding pins where the bolts are. Once the lower handlebar is secured to the deck, you can see it's much easier to control the mower. So I think it was a huge success for not a lot of money or time. The last thing we need to do is install the upper portion and then we'll be able to move on to the bigger problem, which is of course the engine. Another possible solution would be to get the original broken handles and see if I could fix them. I'm not sure who did the work, but since the owner didn't mention a shop name, I can only guess they did it themselves, and more than likely, they're probably long gone by now. There is one more issue with the new handlebar. Now I can't confirm it, but I think the new bar is longer than it's supposed to be. The reason I think that is the pull rope seems to be short when pulling it. Unfortunately, if I leave the new bar as one piece, I cannot slide the upper portion any lower because of its design. As long as the owner doesn't mind having a short pull rope, then I won't have to modify the lower handlebar. Another reason why this handlebar would have issues like this is if the hardware or the steel pins were worn out. If that was the case, then the handlebar would always be loose, which would make controlling the mower a lot harder. The fix would be to replace the fastening hardware and fix the pins, since this part is no longer available. I never got a chance to see how bad the original one was that made him throw it away, but I'm sure it was repairable. Once the upper handle is back on the mower, you can see it's a lot easier to control and we shouldn't have any further problems from it. Now all the fasteners will need to be checked in a few weeks or after a few hours of use, and if any of them are loose, we'll have to consider using lock washers. The next thing we need to do is address the engine issues, and the biggest one, of course, is the bent crankshaft. Normally, I would just replace the crankshaft because it's still quite affordable. However, once I drained the oil, things took a terrible turn. Unfortunately, that's where we're going to have to leave this repair and we'll continue it in the next video. In the end, the repair took about 3 hours to do, which of course includes filming time, and the cost was less than $3. After all that work, the mower is at least usable again. So my question is, would you have tried a different method than using nuts and bolts to fix the handlebar? I don't need to know the specifics of what you would do, just whether or not my method seemed reasonable to you. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions, and I hope to see you in the next video.